Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, welcome to this online course on legal language. This is lecture number 12 and the title of this lecture is Reading Comprehension of Principles and Practices. I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University, Matra. So with this note, I am going to start and tell something more about reading comprehensions. You all like being a learners, you people have already done reading comprehensions based on that you have learned how to answer those and just basically read those uh, comprehensions by using skimming, scanning, intensive and extensive reading techniques. You people might be aware about all these things, but what makes a difference when it comes to the utility and to apply all those things on legal principles, on legal uh, practical or you can say legal practice uh, comprehensions. So you have to learn all those things and in this lecture you all will definitely get to know about certain other things of reading comprehension with a live example from the UCC uh, paragraph that I have taken. And uh, yes, of course, in that condition, you will definitely be uh, like uh, happy to know that uh, I, we have like uh, I'm going to deal with certain paragraphs which are real life examples for your understanding. So with this note, let's move further towards the learning outcomes. So what are the learning outcomes of this particular lecture? Yes, we are going to move this. Now, you all will be able to comprehend the principles of read legal reading comprehensions. Now in this condition you must know that these reading comprehensions will definitely like once you will be able to learn the principles these things are going to help you out. Then you are going to learn the audio visual practice of reading comprehension. Like if there is a kind of audio visual practice like how these recordings, how these testimonies are used to give you an exposure how you learn and how to answer those questions by listening it carefully. So this is the point where you have to groom yourself and develop an understanding of verbosity, Latin expressions, nominalizations, sometimes embedded clauses, passive and lengthy sentences. They are very much required. You all will be able to learn and analyze by the end of this lecture, analyze the prospects of language and communication in professional arena. Yes, of course, this is again a very important aspect and by learning this reading comprehension, last but not the least, my dear learners, you all will be able to understand the utility and the need and role of uh, basically these reading comprehension in English uh, legal writings and because once you read something, you try to imbibe the information that is provided through that reading comprehension and because reading makes a, make a full man or complete man basically. Like the more you read any article, any judicial document or judiciary, uh, judicial writing, you all definitely be able to imbibe some more knowledge about case laws, about statutes, about regulations about legal precedents, about different types of uh, improvements and updates in the uh, like uh, scenario, in the whole updates in the recent times. So these things are really very much important and by the time this lecture would end, all of my dear learners would be able to go through all these things. So further I would like to tell you about the contents. What is the, what are the topics that we are going to cover in this lecture and uh, in this the first one thing that you would understand what is reading comprehension. Is it like just a long passage or it has some kind of like special uh, like uh, uh, features, special characteristic features where you have to like understand and just uh, focus on. 
further you would be able to learn about the steps of reading comprehension. What are the steps that I have already discussed with you? There are four steps or four techniques of uh, reading comprehension that is skimming, scanning, intensive and extensive reading. And it depends on the subject matter that which type of reading uh, technique or reading uh, skill or steps you are going to attain. Then further you would definitely learn step by step, step 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, step by step solving the problems on solving the uh, like uh, reading the passage first of all then analyzing it, learning, uh, finding out legal maxims, legal law uh, rules and regulations, sometimes terminologies. So you would find out all those things. So we will discuss it step by step. Then I have given an I, hypothetical legal scenario. I am trying, I am going to give you a, a very beautiful situation where you would certainly come up with your own, uh, you can say the answer or uh, it will definitely come up with the critical thinking. It will reflect your critical thinking. So be very much particular about all these things, everyone. So this is again an important part, yes. Then through this reading comprehension, I am going. I have already added one more reading comprehension for your practice and in that case, I have taken an example of UCC that is something really relevant and uh, yes, further we would discuss about the methods and benefits of audio practice and visual practice, right. So whenever we talk about reading comprehension, it is not only reading with your eyes, but you can definitely listen to the audios also which can definitely help you to hone your skills of understanding it very well because many people have the tendency of uh, like uh, absorbing or just uh, interpreting the things on the basis of good listening power. They are able to concentrate when they listen it very carefully and even with a small child like you know this thing very well that whenever the child is like uh, while learning the rhymes, while learning the uh, like A, B, C, D maybe alphabets we generally bring some audio tapes so that they can learn it, sing it in a rhyme manner and they can definitely reflect it so well. Am I right? So it has some kind of like magical power you can say which actually appeals to your brain and actually motivates your mesmerizing power. So this is again an important aspect where audio and visual both uh, like, uh, like you can say both the practice helps out very well. So audio practice and visual practice in reading comprehension. Then I am going to come up with some audio books also. I am going to re recommend several audio books for you or for all of you where you can definitely work out very well with that case. Further we shall talk about some new things uh, like yes uh, after completing all this content I am going to just start with something new and we will come up with several uh, types of uh, like. Uh, reading comprehension. So let us talk about this reading comprehension. Let us talk about what do you mean by that. So basically when it comes to reading comprehension, it includes active listening. We do have a separate uh, lecture based on active and passive listening. So be ready with that lecture also, complete uh, your, all your assignments because in my previous lecture I have already discussed active and passive listening because that creates an indelible impact on your personality and your impression on others also, okay. So active listening is important, only listening is not important, but active listening is important, active engagement is important. Contextual awareness, whatever you are reading, do you have any idea about that? This is really very much important, like if you are talking about any corporate law, any case law, you or a statute, if you are reading a paragraph on that, you may, you must have the out idea, the outline features of the same thing. Then you must understand the broader context in which text is situated, historical, societal and legal. So being an individual, you must know about all these things. What is the historical background? Which society it belongs to? What are the legal ethics? There are some ethical problems in it or not? You must know about all these things, yes, so that like you would be perfect enough to delve or to find out the questions which are coming up with that. You would be able to answer all the questions. 
So, with this note, yes, you must know about the active participation, the active engagement and contextual knowledge about it. Second point what you is uh, you are required to do is some pre-reading strategies should be followed and should be implemented. What are these pre-reading uh, like uh, strategies? You must have at least a contextual idea about the topic. Then highlighting headings, you must find out the headings, you must find out the subheadings many times, you must find out the summaries so that it will not be all of a sudden coming up out of the blue. It should have some kind of content, your brain must have some food for thought. It would not exactly like go beyond your imagination, oh all of a sudden something new has come in front of you. So create subheadings, headings and have some uh, summaries also. So by reading slowly and slowly, carefully and highlighting words, you would be able to understand that reading comprehension. Further, readers can break down the complex sentence. I have seen many people like they write in legal uh, yeah, books, I have seen many uh, like sentences which are complex sentence. So break down, do, down those complex sentences into smaller ones, simple sentence and then you would be able to understand them very well. They, you would be able to actually come up with the exact and, uh, exact and direct meaning and interpretation of that particular sentence. So try to highlight that. Third, you would definitely be able to like annotate the text by highlighting, underlining or by making marginal notes because they are very important. And why these notes like in while making the notes many people complain that oh I am very much like uh, I am unable to go through all these things because these are so lengthy lectures and I am unable to take down the notes. But for note making I would like to tell you try to take notes and use abbreviations in that part. Specific abbreviations list are also there which are which are used for these type of like uh, using these things using these uh, like uh, in notes also ok. So be very much particular about them, use some abbreviations but not in your legal writings. Avoid using abbreviations in your legal writings but in notes obviously you can definitely use those abbreviations. Further after reading, summarizing key points in own words, fo focus on legal vocabulary and terminology which is again very essential. Legal terminologies, legal vocabulary is really very much important. Without that, things will definitely be useless. It won't actually appear, uh, approach your brain if you don't know about any legal maxim, right? So it just definitely you must have all these things. Further, we are going to understand types of reading technique. This I have already explained in words. Now I am going to explain you what do you mean by scanning? Then further, what do you mean by skimming, intensive and extensive reading? So you must have the idea of, of using these type of techniques. When it comes to skimming, remember, it is a reading briskly for important points of a text. Reading briskly, okay, it gives an overview and mental picture that helps you retain the main idea. So skimming is actually reading quickly and which gives you main idea that is skimming, skimming certain things, skimming certain things to get the main idea remember, brisk reading and main idea, these two things are important in skimming. But when it comes to scanning, scanning requires the highlighting words of the paragraph. Now in this condition what will you do? The reading rapidly. Here it is briskly, now it is rapidly to find a particular piece of information which is really very important. So it must work read reading rapidly I should say, right? And scanning is used to look for specific words or phrases. For example, if you are searching some words, if there is, a, there is some word like uh, just find how many readings, how many words at how many places reading word is there in this whole thing. So how will you find out reading, reading. So this is what scanning is almost reading, okay. So basically scanning is to find out some words, 
to find out some specific words and specific phrases okay so so that you can definitely make up the legal use make use of those legal maxims very easily okay so and add some extra information and uh, answer queries you may have because on the basis of those phrases on the basis of those words those legal maxims you would be able to find out the answer the answer of those queries which are which are placed which are aforementioned that uh, reading comprehension okay so yes scanning is also a wonderful method of finding out the answers quick reading that means quick reading means reading rapidly whereas skimming means reading briskly and just calculate the or absorb or just find out the main idea so skimming is like that scanning is like that so third one is intensive reading intensive reading is actually going word by word because reading is a re, uh, reading this type of reading is a reading of shorter text for detailed and minor information detailed and minor information like it means to say even minute details or intricate part would also be dealt with that would be able to find out after intensive reading intense and it is a rigorous te technique of reading which requires a lot of hard work which requires focused attentiveness this is far more time consuming than scanning or skimming because this is more time consuming right this one is more time consuming okay so this one is really very much important because it is a reading of techniques reading techniques intensive skimming will go briskly brisk reading main idea scanning will talk about reading rapidly reading rapidly and maybe well talking about that if you go and read rapidly then definitely it will add some more extra information or you would be able to answer the queries third point intensive reading yes of course you would be able to find out and read each and everything right word by word and it is more time consuming that is intensive okay and this is far more time consuming but the last one is extensive last one is extensive reading and in this extensive reading this reading is useful and useful for reading longer text for example novel for example if i'm going to read uh, the long compositions the uh, like books maybe sometimes story books sometimes news articles so they are of uh, in extensive reading because it requires a lot of time and the basic purpose of this is enjoyment of the novel maybe going through word by word is to enjoy it thoroughly right so this is skimming brisk walk brisk reading and main idea scanning find out the words the the uh, you can say some phrases some legal maxims and just try to find those words which may be helpful for you to find out the to resolve the queries third point intensive reading because intensive reading will definitely be there where you will definitely have the pleasure of reading but this is more time consuming than skimming and scanning and then further we have the fourth one that is uh, extensive reading which is for pleasure pleasure reading and in that pleasure reading that is a longer text longer text may be sometimes novels sometimes stories long stories sometimes uh, news articles so longer ones that is for pleasure so these are four reading techniques and further now i would like to discuss the steps the steps for reading comprehension when it comes to steps what is the first and first thing first and foremost thing is that preparing your text you must know at least the outline of that text it would not be like out of the blue given to you oh ho you have to do this no it should not be done like that okay so preparing the text is important and in that condition you must ensure that it is the text is of appropriate length complexity and it contains the elements of analysis for example statutes cases and legal articles you must have the thorough information about all these things if some statutes are mentioned in this if some articles are mentioned article 15 article 
you must actually mention that if some cases are there, uh, uh, if some uh, like uh, Keshav Nanda case, Keshav Nanda Bharti's case or, or any, any case law, right? So, any landmark cases or any other, you must have the mind set up that yes, these things are going to be discussed. Further, you should have that kind of uh, work where pre-reading strategies should be maintained. Pre-reading strategies means like you should prepare once you know that what are the legal maxims, what are the statutes, what are the regulations and legal articles I am going to start, uh, study. So, these things should be there in your mind. Second, pre-reading strategies means like why are they reading the text? You must know what is the logic. That means, I said WH question words are important to be answered first of all. Why? Then what is the composition about? What should they look for? What should they look for? Why? And encourage the students as if a teacher, like as if I am the teacher, I should definitely encourage the students to read and read lot. Acquire knowledge from different sources, sources of law. That is very important by uh, skimming the test text for headings, subheadings and keywords to get an initial sense of its structure and content. Many times in long books, uh, there is a strategy where we use thumb through method. Thumb through method is actually using thumb and putting it in the, cop in the book where you can definitely open it and start reading from that side, then close it and then you can start reading it from that side because that will definitely in, uh, evolve interest in that particular novel in that particular work, in that particular short story, in that particular uh, like uh, general article you can say. So, in that condition this is thumb through method. So, in the same manner you must like as an, as an individual one must be motivated to first of all skim it, skim the text S K I M, skim the text, find out the headings, subheadings and some legal terminologies whether it is statute or regulation or anything else or act. So, you have to find out first of all. Last, you should relate the reading to prior knowledge or concepts one has learned. So, if there is any kind of like, uh, if you have any kind of exposure to these type of uh, reading comprehensions, yes of course, you can definitely deal with it. Okay. So, you all have to understand this aspect that reading, that what is the relation of this reading with previous, with any kind of previous work that you have done. So, with this note, yes, this is step number two. The first one, first strategy was preparing the text. Preparing the text, maybe you have to find out the elements for analysis. So, what are the elements that are given to the analysis? What are the elements that are provided for the analysis? Whether it is a statute, whether it is a regulation, whether it is a kind of legislation, whether it is a kind of legal article or general anything. So, you have to find out this aspect. Point number one. Point number two, you have pre-reading strategies. For pre-reading strategies, you must have to answer, you must have the answer of these questions that why, why am I reading this? Then what is the things, what are the things that I am looking for? Then third, I must know that I, uh, I must encourage the students or whosoever is reading, first come up with skimming part, using headings, subheadings, sometimes finding the elements, some, some words, so that we can find out why is it important to go through it. Then you must relate the reading with some kind of previous read material. So, these are two steps of reading comprehension. Further, we are going to turn up with different types of uh, like uh, reading comprehensions, what are the steps related to it. So, next one is reading, step number 3. So, how are we going to read? That I have already told you, read the text carefully, emphasizing comprehension over speed, emphasizing em comprehension over speed. That means, you must decide what is the length of the whole paragraph? What is the length of the reading comprehension? How much words you are able to understand and which kind of like motivation or which kind of objective does it have behind reading it? So, maintaining the pace, it is very important. Further, you must annotate the text by underlining key points. Now, in this condition, you must actually know 
that which type of key points are there making margin notes highlighting important passages etc so you must know about them and whenever you type any questioning like uh, you must take a pause reflect on what is read and to clarify any familiar terms or concepts so it's not in a one go that you should go first draft second draft reading third draft reading it should not be like in a go you read it and just give the answers you must try to when it is a lengthy composition you try to do it in in segments maybe so as to come up with the perfect answer if you have some time if you have some deadlines before that so take pause you can definitely show it to your peers and reflect on what is read that means you you will find out find the legal terms find the objectives then you must find out the the aim some kind of moral does it convey does it convey some kind of moral so all these things are really very much important further questioning questioning is again an important aspect now when it comes to questioning i told you that look up the question and then read the comparison then read the comprehension look up the question what is the demand of the question and then read the comprehension that will definitely reduce the time and you would be able to actually learn and grasp everything according to the demand of the question the query so for questions also like i would say that questions should cover should cover what should cover various aspects now which kind of aspects does it should it cover any idea first of all i'm just going to write down here maybe uh, first one is main idea you must have the main idea second you must know about the key arguments what are the key arguments right then further third point you must know about supporting evidence supporting evidence you must know about that supporting evidence and fourth you must talk about the implications so these are the questions these are the things that questions should cover implications right so when we ask some questions what are the things that you must understand while asking the question you must know about the main idea what is the main idea of this reading comprehension right after learning about the main idea you must know that what are the key arguments when it comes to key arguments that means like you must talk about like uh, which type of thing case law which kind of like article 15 which kind of like uh, statute is talking about which kind of like environmental protection act it is talking about so key arguments you must know about that so that would be a part of question right third you would be able to know about the supporting evidence supporting evidence may be some kind of witness some kind of proofs some kind of documental rights that you have some photographs might be there so supporting documents supporting evidence fourth you about the questions when it comes it, you must know about the implications right so these are four criterion on which you can definitely work out very well further when it comes to questioning provide a set of comprehension questions related to the text so that to check the uh, <clears throat> understanding of the child whether he is able to grasp the idea that you are trying to give him or not so come up with that uh, questioning part because questions actually check the understanding and analytical power plus critical thinking and uh, search that kind of like it's a kind of delving deep into the meaning of that next it should generate their own questions they read like suppose if i have given some topic to anyone i would certainly ask that fellow that you have to find out the answer plus you have to raise few more questions related to this topic because raising a question and going on with group discussion will certainly make the things much easier for everyone to understand when it is a reading comprehension and my dear learners you all should know that whenever the topic of any legal writing comes it becomes really very ambiguous to understand and go through it because many times it happens that people are unable to understand because of those legal lack of understanding of legal terminologies so with due respect 
I would like to ask you or suggest everyone out there, please try learn those legal maxims every day, at least 5 legal maxims every day so as to develop these skills. Okay? So, further this is the thing and then further we shall move towards the discussion part. I told you that after reading, after churning, you can ask the students to discuss <clears throat> and after discussion you must definitely facilitate a group discussion to share their thoughts, insights and answers. So, you must create a group where people can discuss the questions. Now, open ended questions should be asked. What are open ended questions everyone? Open ended questions are prompt, critical thinking and deeper analysis. I would like to tell you when it comes to questions part, questions are of many types right. In the previous slide also I have explained you. Types of questions when it comes, we have several categories for example, choice questions or I will see. Yeah, so let us take up over here for questions we have. For questions we have choice questions, right? Then we have indirect question. We have indirect question. Then we have third one hypothetical question, where a situation is given to the student and hypothetical questions are given. Fourth, we have closed questions, closed questions will be answered like yes or no. Fifth one we have open ended questions, open ended questions will require what, when, where, how because it will retail detailed answers will be required in that. Okay? Sixth we have funnel questions from funnel question have you seen the funnel, how does it work? If I talk about funnel and make it like this from broader to narrower board, from broader to narrower, narrow. So, from here we can ask about uh, introduce yourself and then you can definitely talk about certain other things and then narrow down that means then you can talk about their aims, their goals, what are your uh, achieve achievements till now, so what are your expectations. So, these things will come in the funnel question from broader term to the narrower part. Seventh, we have the next category that is rhetorical questions. We have rhetorical questions. Rhetorical questions will be based on some assumptions and uh, yes, WH question words, WH question words would be there. Yeah. So, these are few types of questions that are important, that are very much important for my dear learners. Please try to focus on these questions and then try to go through those reading comprehensions. So, let us talk about the questions part we have already done. Uh, yes, summarization I have already discussed about open ended questions that means you will answer the questions of what, how, when, where because these things will definitely ask you to give the answers in detailed manner in detailed manner, right? So, these are open ended questions my dear learners and this will definitely help you out to go through certain aspects. Now, sixth point is summarizing. How are you going to summarize the entire reading comprehension? Like what is the gist of that? What is the idea that it has conveyed? So, you are going to talk about the summarization, main points, arguments, conclusion of the text in your own works. So, remember first of all prepare the text, prepare the text. Second, you are going to uh, follow some strategies to read. Third, reading. Fourth, questions. Then discussion. You may uh, text some discussion, have some discussions on that so that you can open up your brain with other people who can discuss with you. And last, yes, summarize it. After summarization, 
summarization in words in your own text and that is the reason whenever you go for reading comprehension your marks are deducted if you copy each and every line from the text itself from the passage itself you are not supposed to copy anything from that text remember you have to create the answers in your own words you have to write the answers in your own words this is really very much important so write down the text in your own words emphasize the importance of concise and clear summaries concise and clear summaries are required it should not beating around the bush it should not take the entire paragraph and taking up the notes whenever you go for notes and summary remember that it will be of 25% if there are 100 words there the summary would be of 25 words only okay so pressy writing could be like that further analyze and interpret analysis and interpretation is very much important because you would be analyze the text on with your own perception with your own perception analyze the text legal principles arguments and implications encourage them to think critically and form their own opinion because this is really very much important your critical analytical power your analytical power your critical power would come forward to work out and discuss how the text relates to broader legal concepts or real world applications right so you must know how to deal with it come with analytical power come with critical power and how the text relates to broader level i told you from broader level to a narrow uh, level real world applications so if you talk about any like uh, uh, reason any any case law you can try to correlate with the real life examples okay for example uh, if there is any kind of law precedence then definitely you can apply that law precedence to this part also yeah and uh, further application the last application so give hypothetical legal scenarios now i would like to give some hypothetical legal scenario to you as well for your practice now before that i would like to tell you hypothetical legal uh, scenarios means like any situation would be given to you and you would be asked to enact according to it so how will you react suppose if i say uh, if if i i'm going to write down here this hypothetical legal scenario like if you had if you had a chance if you had a chance comma would you want to be pain free for the rest of your life for the rest of your life now this is the hypothetical situation hypothetical question if you would be given the chance suppose would you love to be free would you love to be pain free so this is hypothetical some assumption is given to you some real life situation is given to you how are you going to deal with that okay so the question is application that means same kind of situation would be given to you and how would be your reaction to it so this is all about legal uh, like field and practical situations according to it articulate how concepts discussed in the text could be used in legal practice so now let's talk about this reading comprehension for your understanding i have taken up this legal comprehension this uh, hypothetical scenario where you can definitely imagine that how things work out okay so this hypothetical situation let's talk about this is the this is the paragraph that i have uh, given to you now questions on the basis of this read out its one at 12 pm while sham badhoria was at the movies jay shankar so what are the important things that you are going to highlight first of all use the word i told you skimming and scanning highlighting the main idea that's it okay so skimming highlighting the main idea sham badoria was at movies jay shankar climbed the high fence surrounding the climbed the high fence surrounding sham badoria's home so this is the first this is the second now who would be the plaintiff and who would be the defendant that you have to decide 
surrounding Sham Badoria's home and entered the porch through an unlocked porch door. So, he entered that means Jay, Jay Shankar entered or we can say that he blocked off the gate. He unlocked the unlocked the doors. Now, you can just see who is responsible, who would be the plaintiff and who would be the defendant. The porch through an unlocked porch door. He then loaded all the porch furniture onto the back of her pick up truck. While on the porch, he noticed that one of the windows to the living room was open. So, one of the windows of the living room was open. He could see an expensive, he could see an expensive television and computer which he decided to take. He climbed through the window but heard a sound, heard a noise, left hurriedly instead. This is the situation that I have given you, right? This is hypothetical situation. Suppose at 12 p.m. what happened? While Sham Bhadoria was at movies, Jay Shankar climbed the porch and definitely Sham Bhadoria's home and he entered the porch, unlocked the porch door and he entered, he picked up all the things that were kept in the porch area and put it in his pickup van. After that, he simply looked inside that window which was quietly open, barely open and there he could see the television and expensive television and computer. So, he decided to break into, yeah. So, he decided to break into the house for these things. So, who is the plaintiff over here? Who is the plaintiff? What, which kind of idea that you have understood? Plaintiff, plaintiff is Sham Badoria. He is going to complain now. And defendant, who is the defendant? Defendant is Jay Shankar. So, who is going to uh, file a complaint? Plaintiff, Sham Badoria, defendant, Jay Shankar. Now, let us move up towards the, towards the part where you have to understand this thing. Now, this whole scenario clearly indicates that this reading comprehension was all about comprehension was all about the Larsen C. Now, this is what theft, okay. So, the case would be filed in the interest of interest to or you can say intent, intent to commit Lawrence and larceny. Okay. So, what are the things that are important over here? Burglary, entering, entering means breaking into. Then we have dwelling, then maybe intent and larceny. So, these are few terms that important terms that I told you which are important here, right. Then, then we are going to discuss about these terms, understood everyone? So, here the question is whether Jay Shankar may be guilty of a burglary. So, this is the question whether Jay Shankar may be guilty or not. So, you are going to talk about prima facie. Now, in this condition on the basis of prima facie that at first sight or you can say uh, based on 
what appears to be true to be true at first at first even even the even it may be proved false later so at first sight so at first sight my question to you is whether jay shankar is the culprit who is actually trying to theft or who, who has broke into the house of uh, shambadoria so at prima facie yes of course it is like that but there could be some other reasons to defend him and could be some other logics behind that so you can definitely read the comprehension carefully find out the uh, meanings and find out the terms that are supportive to your document to your uh, uh, arguments and then come up with the version so with this note we move further towards the next part that is assessment how are you going to assess the entire information that you have gathered in this condition you must know that evaluate understanding through quizzes you must conduct quiz you must conduct have written responses and class participation as if i told you class participation through group discussion through group discussion right so you must actually acquire information through this source third you must know about productive constructive feedback because on the basis of that constructive feedback on their comprehension critical thinking and analysis skills you would be able to learn more and more about it beta so you must know that all this comprehension skills will develop the critical thinking and analytical power now reflection is portraying in or uh, yes summarizing it in the form of summarizing it in the form of answers in the form of answers right so reflect on what they have learned from the text and the reading comprehension process that means you would definitely come out with the reflection reflection how are you going to give the reflection either give the summary or discuss or you would be asked to write down major points headings subheadings so these things will definitely help you out to come up with reflection side then discuss how they can apply these skills to future readings and legal studies for so if you have understood that uh, shambadoria's case suppose taken as example jay shankar and shambadoria's case you should try to implement or find some other case law which can be used as a legal precedence to prove this point to prove that shambadoria is uh, or jay shankar is innocent or he is the culprit so you have to find several uh, similar type of cases to prove it further after that reading comprehension for your practice now i have taken this ucc section 2 204 formation in general that is contract law this has been taken from this link it has already been mentioned over here so this contract after reading this particular contract uh, use the technique of uh, you can say skimming and scanning and so that you would be able to go through it in a proper manner finding the main idea so just read it and some questions are attached with it these are the questions either either read the question and then go to the answers then to go to the comprehension or you can read the questions or you can just read the paragraph highlight the terms and then go through the questions part so it completely depends completely it's your call which type of uh, like uh, planning you are going to take which kind of technique you are going to opt so let's read this one a contract for the sale of goods may be made in any manner sufficient to show agreement including conduct by both parties which recognizes the existence of such a contract second a con agreement sufficient to constitute a contract for sale may be found even though the moment of its making is undermined third even though one or more terms are left open that means if some or more terms are still left open 
a contract for sale does not fail for indefiniteness if the parties have intended to make a contract and there is a reasonably certain basis for giving an appropriate remedy solution remedy is solution now these are three commandments or you can say formation in general rules for it contract law in this case you have to go through each and every word each and every line and after learning understanding these things what is your task you have to just find out the legal highlighting words and on the basis of that go through the questions and then find the answers let's complete it this section deals with the formation of contracts for the sale of goods and under the ucc under the ucc what is ucc it is uniform it is uniform commercial code right so under this formation of contract it introduces key concepts related contract formation including the flexibility of forming a contract like including the flexibility of a contract the possibility of a undermined moment of making the contract and notion that a contract may still be valid even if some terms are left open provided there is a reasonably certain basis for remedy so this is actually the whole thing is summarized through this particular paragraph now the questions are here what are the main points of this section regarding contract formation so here you are going to summarize these three points so what is the the question main points of this section regarding contract formation so contract formation look at them we have contract formation over here contract for sale may be found even though the moment of its making is undermined so this is sufficient then how does this section address the flexibility of forming a contract this section address the flexibility of forming a contract including yes the section deals with the formation of contracts for the sale of goods under ucc it introduces key concepts related to contract formation including the flexibility of the contract the possibility of an undermined moment for making the contract and notion that a contract this is the flexibility that a contract may still be valid even if some terms are left open so this is the answer to second question change it into your own words what does the statute say about the moment of making the contract the moment of making the contract the statute says about ucc and changes in the contract law under what circumstances can a contract still be valid even the some terms are left open this is again the same question that a contract may still be valid if some terms are left open provided there is a reasonably certain basis for remedy solution some kind of solution is there if there is any kind of solution right so with this we are going to move forward towards the audio practice of reading comprehension audio and visual as if i told you only reading part is not important audio hearing it is important and they, looking it through your eyes is important so we have audio books over here we have uh, several text to speech software tts text to speech software we have uh, then a podcast also podcast often feature discussions or readings of written content then we have oral explanations several types of oral explanations are also there even having verbally explain and interpret a complex text concepts can aid comprehension so oral explanations of all those things we have then we have group discussions that's waiting in group discussions or study groups where the text is discussed so you can definitely first of all Uh, read it thoroughly and then you can go for discussion so audio practice for reading comprehension is very important if you read if you hear it then definitely it leaves a good impact on the audience on on your understanding second is visual practice of reading comprehension how are you going to uh, like hone your skills of looking towards it and then doing so mind mapping is important in that condition create visual representation of the text such as mind maps concept maps help organize a visual key ideas of the relationship that means you must have the legal terminologies in your mind you must prepare your mind that i'm going to talk about the contract law or i'm going to talk about any 
uh, case law. So, you must have the idea related to it. Second, you must have the graphic organizers or visual aids related to it. So, graphic organization vis visual aid is images, videos, charts, diagrams, tables that actually make the things more appealing and the idea becomes more clear to you and visually they appeal to you. Third one highlighting and annotation. Highlighting and annotation is like when you read something you measure the uh, headings, subheadings in such a manner as if it creates happiness or you understand everything. So, color coding is there, highlighting and annotating the text can visually emphasize key points and facilitate comprehension and retention in that condition. Sometimes visual summaries are there, they summarize everything such as infographics are there, visual timelines are there and they are very much condensed most of the time. Flashcards are another important thing, creating flashcards with key terms and visual representation can aid the memorization and comprehension. Some Flashcards are some indicating cards with key terms that okay, uh, you paste it somewhere and then you find it like interesting. Sometimes comics and graphic novels are also there. So, nowadays graphic novels are used to, uh, to, to uh, actually treat the patients also because these things have become a kind of uh, medicines nowadays and in these cases like graphic novels are used as a medicines to cure the can cancer patients the patients who are uh, struggling with some kind of uh, fatal diseases. So, yes, graphic novels and graphic uh, pictures, they are really very much important. Further, I would like to come up with some examples of or recommended books for recommended uh, like uh, notes for audio and visual practices. So, here are some recommendations of audio books. To Kill a Mockingbird Har by Harper Lee, narrated by Sissy Spackick. Now, this is the theme of uh, themes of justice and the theme of justice is uh, dealt over here and uh, basically dealing with racial justice and uh, dealing with racial uh, discrimination, dealing with racial, racial and uh, discrimination, racial discrimination right and uh, this one is for moral responsibility and lawyer uh, has written this uh, this one then the audacity of hope thoughts on reclaiming the american dream now this one is from barack obama and he has discussed the vision he has discussed the vision of more just more just and equitable america more just and equitable america right then we have uh, just mercy a story of justice and redemption by brian stevenson this is basically a lawyer story lawyer sharing experiences sharing experiences basically of equality in the criminal justice system then gideon's trumpet by anthony lewis this one is about uh, couldn't about a lawyer about story of this man about the story of Gideon who actually could not afford an attorney, who could not afford an attorney and in that condition he himself fought that law as, uh, as an attorney and he defended himself in that condition. So, this is the story and audio books are also provided for all these. The next one is the nine inside the secret world of supreme court. So, these audio by Zephyr Chubin and in that condition this is provides an insider. This one provides an insider for these things, insider to insider who looks at the Supreme Court system, Supreme Court systems, right. So, this is the most important thing. Further, we have Federalist Papers, the Concise of Conservative, Alexander Hamilton, then Innocent Man. This is something really very much important and with this like I would like to ask my dear learners that please be very much particular about reading text and reading thorough reading of text is very much required if you want to hone your skills. So, please refer these things very much and they are really very much important. At the end I would like to say that all these things the whole thing that we have done till now 
drafting, then uh, reading, then coming up with all those skimming, scanning, intensive and extensive reading. We can definitely promote learning of legal terminologies through this. We can overcome the barriers of understanding and analyzing. We can very easily choose the right channel, maybe sometimes audio, sometimes visual, sometimes some graphic novels could be used for it. We can definitely use the communication not just as words, but a mixture of several emotions, body language and many more things. So, be very much perfect when it comes to reading comprehension on legal terminologies. Although it becomes really very ambiguous most of the time, but try to divide those complex sentences, break down those complex sentences into a simpler one. Once you break those simple uh, complex sentences into simple sentences, I am pretty much sure you would be able to do wonders with it. Yeah, so with this note, these are the references that I would like to refer, uh, that I have referred till now, text types in English then reading and researching, then uh, developing reading skills, a practical guide to reading comprehension exercise towards an interactive model, attention and performance, then uh, verbal protocols of reading and even several other things that I have already shared with you. So, please be very much perfect about uh, reading comprehension my dear learners. This is Dr. Divya Gupta signing up for now. I think that you all can definitely imbibe that spirit of skimming, scanning, intensive and extensive reading reader along with one who can resolve all critical and analytical power. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone.